Hello my friends, before we get started, I want to mention that this portion of the video is sponsored by Scentbird. It's a fragrance subscription service where you can discover, explore and experience scents just for you. Here are some of the ones that I selected and honestly I love them because you can be rocking so many different scents such as Prada, Gucci and even Versace. And definitely this is my favorite one. I'm so obsessed with Scentbird because you can choose a different designer. Scentbird is one of the best subscription service for fragrance and you can try them every month for only $17. Best, you can skip any month without penalties. You can also upgrade and receive two to three products a month, and that's 30 days supply. The best thing about this is that you can try so many of them, and that way you can decide which one is your favorite so you can get the big. Ball. It all depends on what you like if you're a sweet person, a sour person, you like strong perfumes or really light ones, or even if you like to wear different perfumes for different occasions, just like me. And it's so simple and easy to use, you just unlock and spray. I love that they're super easy on the go so you can take it anywhere and the best thing is that you will never run out of your favorite fragrance if you guys are interested and you already know you can go and check out the link and down below to use my code and you will receive a 55% off on your first month purchase so make sure to take advantage and of thank me. you once again to Semper for sponsoring this portion of the video now let's continue with this vlog Hi friends, welcome once again to my YouTube channel. For today's video, as you guys saw on the title, I will be doing my birth story. Many of you probably already seen the video and if you haven't, make sure to go and check it out because you can see, you know, like the actual visual portion of my birth. Well, not my birth, my baby's birth, but you know what I mean? I wanna tell you guys my story with more details because we did cut a lot of things on the video. First of all, it was one hour video. I never thought people were gonna be interested in one hour video of me giving birth, but um, it seems like a lot of you guys did end up watching it and I'm so grateful for it because it was rough. It was really, really rough as you guys know. I was pregnant with my first child. It's a baby boy. He's already 13 days today actually. He was born March 11 at 120 something, I forgot. And it's been so beautiful. Honestly, I feel so blessed. I feel so happy. You guys know that I did my baby shower super late. I was hoping the baby was not gonna arrive anytime soon because a lot of you were telling me that baby was probably gonna come sooner. But I did end up having my baby shower. Everything was perfect. I was already 38 weeks. I was about to be 39. And I was just so ready, you know, to give birth. Even though it was really scary for me. When I found out that I was pregnant, I was shedding bricks. First of all, because I took the plan B and it did not work not because the plan b didn't work it's more because i did not read the instructions and i didn't know how the plan b worked it's not gonna work for you if you are already ovulating i was already ovulating and i did the d in my birthday not my birthday but the date the next day of my birthday the point is that i got pregnant and i always said that having a child it's no joke i know it's something serious it's huge responsibility and my first trimester was really rough as well i lost so much weight i was really sick i had all the symptoms literally except for the cravings i never had any cravings i'm talking about like the bad ones i was puking every single day i don't even know why they call it morning sickness because that shit was 24 7 i couldn't even hold water i lost so much weight i was looking like the twilight movie the girl when she got pregnant well that was me the good thing that i had my husband and he's such a great support system he always been like ever since we've been like together since high school We've been like this and he's just amazing. The second trimester came up and I was getting much better. I was able to eat. Everything was going great until the third trimester, well, the beginning. Because that's when I found out that I had gestational diabetes. And I was like, oh my god. And not gonna lie, it was like a curse and a blessing at the same time. Because I was eating way better, way healthier. And now I can get into like the actual birth and delivery. And yeah, like everything started, I would say, March 8th. I was doing everything so a baby could like come out as soon as possible. And why? It's because, like I mentioned... I had gestational diabetes, meaning that my baby can overgrow because of the like the GD, and that will lead into a induction or a C-section, which I did not want. And the reason why I didn't want that is because I know it can get more difficult when you have a C-section. I was trying my best to 
have my baby as natural as possible and one of my concerns was that he was going to be too big for my body especially because it was my first child that's why i started like doing exercises and walking doing the deed because that's what a lot of people said that helped them go into labor and i would take hot tubs and i just tried so many things so that day my husband was like you know what let's go for a walk and I was like, yeah, that sounds great. Let's go to Target. I did not think that Target was going to be so far walking because it's literally like three minutes driving. But um, walking was two hours, especially with my huge belly. It was it was a lot. I was taking my time as well. I took the doggies because I just wanted them to get out of the house. And just a little bonding moment with my husband, my dogs, and my belly. As soon as we came back home, I started doing yoga. And I was just stretching, doing some exercises. I was also listening to some positive um, videos. Like, what are they called? Let me just look them up. Hip number thing. Those really helped me. And they made me feel at peace. They were just really helpful. Just so you guys know. And if you're pregnant, you'll go and listen to those because they did help me. But the day went by so fast. We ended up taking a shower. I went to sleep. Just kidding. I did not want to sleep. I actually did the day again. And then I tried to go to sleep. I wasn't able to sleep. I was feeling these little cramps, I would say, like period cramps, but they were super lightly and they would come and go. And I was not really concerned about it because I had been feeling those little cramps. I was already 12 and I was still watching TV. I was like, you know what, let me just go to sleep. So I turned off the TV and I was trying to go to sleep, but I couldn't. I needed to pee, so I got up and I went to the bathroom and I peed. Then I felt like something gooey came out from my vagina and I was like, what the heck? And I looked down and it was my mucus plug and it was just clear and it had a little bit of blood to it. I went to bed, but I couldn't sleep at all because my contractions started getting a little bit stronger because yeah, the period cramps were actually my contraction. But they got a little bit more intense and I was like, okay, let me just tell Gabe. I woke him up and I was like, you know what? I think I'm having contractions. And as soon as I said that, he got so excited that he was like, oh my god, baby's coming out. And I was like, chill, boy. I'm just getting contractions and they're not that bad right now. Like, they're still good. And I just want to labor as much as I can at home. I didn't want to go to the hospital. I really, really dislike hospitals. I'm so traumatized with all the hospitals and nurses and doctors and needles. And now, even more with everything that happened with my birth, you know? So I did not end up sleeping at all and gave either so we just decided to get up it was already 6 a.m and we were still chilling at home just breathing through the contractions i started timing them because a friend sent me a nap that she used they were coming back to back but they just last for 30 seconds and it wasn't that bad then i started getting hungry so we decided to just go to chick-fil-a i decided to call my mom and she was so excited she stayed here for a couple of hours we end up taking a nap, Gabe and I, around, I would say, 12. And when I woke up, I just went outside and I was relaxing. I was breathing. I was listening to the hip number thing. Everything was great. I was like, oh my God, this is going perfect. I'm so excited. I'm looking forward. Even though I'm shitting bricks, I know everything's going to be fine. I was praying. And I was just being, you know, super positive about it. I was ready. The entire day went by like that. I started feeling more of my contractions. They were kind of painful, but they really did feel like my period cramps. Let me just say that my period cramps are really, really bad. The only thing that I would say is that I did like more the contractions than my period cramps. And you might think that I'm crazy. And the only reason why I'm saying this is because the contractions, they come and go. You know, like you can have a little break to breathe. And with my period cramps, no, like two hours will pass by without stopping like i'm the type of girl who doesn't like to take a lot of medication so when i'm in my period i rather take a shower and just relax my body until well, it goes away i wanted to do the same with my labor i didn't want to have any type of medication i just wanted to do it by myself like my body and just nature take over you know but sometimes things don't go the way you want to or the way you plan it the day went by i was taking hot tubs i was trying to relax i was doing yoga i was breathing i was controlling my mind everything was perfect until gabe was like you know what 
it's been forever we should go to the hospital and make sure that you're okay because he was kind of worried so we end up going to the hospital around 8 p.m and there was nobody it was so empty we end up checking in the front desk girl she was really rude i did not understand why she was giving me so much attitude i was being so nice even though i had my contractions i was still being nice to her and the only thing i would ask for her it was to let me breathe you know she seemed annoyed she was like okay like girl hurry up i was like chill girl like this is my first time let me just take it slow and i will ask her questions because of course i don't know a lot of things i'm a first time mom and i have so many questions they might be dumb for so many people but for me they were not dumb so i was asking her questions and she will answer like super smart ass she was like well i don't know i'm not in that department like how am i supposed to know i was like okay dang girl chill and then by accident i press cancel when she did all of like the paperwork or not the paperwork but like my information typing in my information and she was like oh my god you just canceled it and i was like oh my bad what do i do and she was like well i'm gonna have to do it all over again and i was like okay like what do you want me to do like if you want i can type it for you but yeah she was she was rude i did not let that like kill my vibe i was still I was still good then a nurse came up and she um, told me to get in then another nurse came in and she started checking the baby's heartbeat and my heartbeat and my contraction and then she told me that she was gonna check my cervix i was like oh shit because that thing hurts like really really bad i felt like her entire hand went inside me for some reason i felt like every time they checked my cervix they would trigger my contractions like they will make them feel worse she said that I was open to just one centimeter. I was like, what the heck? I've been like this the entire day and just one centimeter. I had to exercise for like an hour, bounce on the ball for 30 minutes and take a walk around the, like the hospital hallways for another 30. She checked me again, the cervix. They end up telling me to go back home because I was going to be there for no reason. And I continue laboring at home. And it continued going like that until the next day. When I lay down, I just remember that I felt like I peed myself, but I knew I did not. So I figured that my water broke and I told Gabe, you know what? I think my water broke and not just that, but my contractions feel a little bit more intense. I think we should go back to the hospital. I checked in again. They took me to a room. They checked my cervix again and they tested the liquid. Well, they confirmed that my water broke and that's when the nurse said that she was going to put the IV. I was freaking out about the IV. I was like, oh my gosh, because I hate needles, but I was like, you know what, just do it, just do it real quick. From there, she took me to my actual room where I was going to give birth. When we got there, well, I called my mom. Then my mom arrived because I really wanted to have my husband and my mom there with me. As soon as I arrived, they asked me if I wanted that epidural and I said no. It's nothing to take personal because a lot of people, they they were upset because they were like, well, I had it and doesn't make me less of a woman. I never said that. Like everybody does whatever they want. And me personally, I just didn't want to. I'm the type of person who doesn't like to take medications tries to avoid them as much as possible if i have to if i really really have to go i will they were like you know what just sign the paper just in case you end up wanting it i did end up signing the paper my mom arrived i was still dealing with my contractions everything was good i was leaking i could feel the water running through my legs it was it was interesting you know i felt like i was peeing 24 7 but it was just my water leaking and i was still handling my contractions pretty well they were really strong i'm not gonna lie they are painful but like i said i was training my mind already and i will breathe through them and i had my mom and gabe and they were just for 30 seconds so they will come and go i was trying to you know maintain myself active i did end up taking several hot tubs because that really relaxed me the only thing that i will say is that every six hours they will change nurses and doctors nurses and doctors so i had multiple nurses multiple doctors and all of the nurses that i had only two of them i would say that i really like them because the rest of them they did nothing literally they did not help me at all they they were not there they would just go and check my cervix and 
that was it and i don't know how that's supposed to work but in my theory in my mind i thought that they would be there you know to help me to tell me oh do this do that that way i could open faster because i was not opening fast enough i was opening super slow my water was already leaking but it was not completely you know everything went by so fast but at the same time so slow and I was so tired by this point I, I couldn't even keep my eyes open anymore that's when I believe I got the infection a infection that they knew I had and I didn't and I know they knew because one of the nurses she was like oh if they continue checking you they, you can get an infection and she told me that but I, I was already like infected you know so I feel like she was trying to give me hints that i was already infected but they didn't want to say anything the reason why i know i was already infected is because one i had fever two my blood pressure was super low um i was having mental confusion i don't remember much about it gabriel is the one who tells me and my mom that i was saying so many like things that made no sense with the infection my contractions got even worse at this point i was so confused because every single nurse that went inside the room she said that i was dilated already five centimeters and then the other one said six and then the other one said five and then the other one said eight everything was kind of confusing so that's when i asked one of the nurses to call the doctor she asked me why did i need the doctor for and i was like i need her to clarify some questions for me because you guys clearly do not know what you guys are doing and she was like oh it's because she's she's busy right now and i was like what do you mean she's busy like i need her here now can you please call her tell her to come here because i have a couple questions and they made it such a big deal she did end up calling the doctor and the doctor came with a huge attitude and it's because she was taking a nap she was mad because i woke her up from her freaking nap and i understand she was probably tired she maybe had a long shift but i was also there like suffering so much for no freaking reason because nobody was there to actually help me or tell me what to do but yeah she was she was annoyed she was mad i could see in her face and the way she was talking to me and she was like what do you need like what what are your questions i was like well i'm wondering how many centimeters i'm actually dilated because these nurses they all give me different answers and she was like well let me check you and she checked me so rough oh i remember she was like <coughs> and she was like oh yeah you're you're eight centimeters and i was like okay so i am eight and she was like yeah you're eight and i was like so what do i do now and she was like well we just need to wait i was like okay so she left and i was there waiting once again this nurse she was like oh girl the doctor is giving up on you she just doesn't want to deal with you and she told me that she's gonna take you to c-section i was like what do you mean nobody has been here to help me or do anything well can you please help me at least try anything so i could open up and she was like yeah like i can help you like nobody has been helping you i was like no like all the nurses they just come check my cervix and they leave and they and then she was like oh my god that's that's really bad like they're supposed to be here to help you and blah blah and i was like well yeah that's what i thought too so she ended up helping me so much she helped me do exercises and just be more active and try to open my cervix because i was not opening fast enough and yeah as soon as um she helped me i was opening like faster but at this point i was really really tired she ended up coming back because she left and she told me you know what like doctor is ready to sign the papers for you to go and like get a c-section i feel like you should rest wait until you open up because you you just need two centimeters just two centimeters to open up and you will be fine and i was like okay so what do i do it's just like just get that epidural girl like get it that way your body rests because you are really really exhausted like i can see in your face and you've been through so much already so i end up getting it and honestly the guy who did it hands let's kiss because i did not feel anything i don't know if because i was really tired or because my contractions were really like super high but um yeah like he he gave me the shot in my back i did not feel anything it was just like a little cold sensation but as soon as he gave me the epidural i felt so relieved like my body felt less tense i did not feel pain but i did feel the contractions yeah that's the only thing i could say also my legs um 
I still could move them. I still could feel them. They felt heavy, but I will, I will still feel them. And that was surprising for the nurse because she was like, oh my God, can you move your legs? I was like, yeah. And I showed her that I could move my legs. And she was like, oh my God, like, do you feel any pain? I was like, no, it's fine. Like I feel the contractions, but it's not painful. I took a little nap because I was really exhausted. That's when I started feeling like so much pressure. Like I wanted to take a dump. Ever since I got the infection, I noticed that, well, I was shedding myself, literally. I would tell the nurses, oh my God, I feel like I'm gonna shed myself. And they were like, oh no, it's just a baby. And blah, blah. I was like, no, 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 girl, look at that. That's shit right there. I was shedding myself, I was peeing myself, and I was leaking. I woke up and I told Gabe, Gabe, go and call the doctor and the nurse because I'm about to push. I feel like I need to push. Gabriel thought that I was, I don't know, maybe crazy. He was telling me to breathe, to relax. I was like, no, boy go and get them and he was like no just breathe and relax i was like go and get them because if not i'm gonna start pushing here and i don't care and i'm just gonna deliver the baby by myself because at this point i'm over it and he was like okay okay so yeah he ended up going getting the nurse the nurse came in and she was like oh girl like you can push yeah i was like yes i can i need to push and she was like it's because you're not ready and i was like how do you know that she was like okay you want me to check your your cervix i was like yeah i mean might as well they've been checking it like 20 times a day she checked my cervix and i saw on her face she was about to lie she was about to lie she was about to say that i was not ready but then i feel like she felt sorry for me she was like okay yeah you're ready i was like yes and that's when i was like okay let me push and she was like no 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 you cannot push it because the doctor's not here and i was like i don't care why you don't help me she was like it's because i'm not certified i'm not a doctor i'm just a nurse and i was like i don't care you're gonna help me she ended up helping me i was like okay let's get this started that's when i started pushing and she was such a great help she helped me so much you guys and she was good uh, at telling me how to push as well because i was afraid that i was not gonna be able to push and the way she explained it to me it was just perfect she was like okay stop pushing and i was like no 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 no. why why am i gonna stop pushing like i'm, I'm good like i can continue and she was like no 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 let me just call the doctor because she needs to be in here i was like get her now because i'm gonna continue pushing so yeah she ended up calling the doctor the doctor came in and i continued pushing and i had my baby that felt amazing not gonna lie just taking the baby out of my body was like <laughs> yes yes i love this i was so happy you guys i i was in shock because i did it and even though i went through so much pain and the nurses didn't really help except for those two it was amazing when they placed the baby on my on my chest i honestly was in shock i did not cry i was just in shock i was just like what the heck is going on everything's going so fast and they just started like taking out the placenta they started pushing my stomach i felt pain i felt my legs i feel everything then they took the baby to like get his measurements and weight and all of that and they brought him back and that's when like my head was like okay i had my baby i started crying and everything was just beautiful perfect and that's when they first told me about the infection and they took me to the postpartum room and then when i got there there was a super nice nurse like she was so nice she was such a sweetheart but her shift was about to end i ended up going to the restroom and gabriel helped me he was there and well i peed everything was good you know i was being super slow because i mean i just had a baby and my body was super weak and i was not feeling great so when i got back from the restroom i i was trying to sit in the bed but i felt like i was gonna faint and my body just felt super weird like weak and my head started hurting so bad and i felt like a lot of shortness of breath i couldn't breathe another nurse came inside the room she asked me if i was okay i told her what i was feeling and that's when they told me okay i think this is not okay because we just we just found out that you have a really bad infection and this infection is really dangerous like it's deadly and we we're gonna start running a lot of tests on you and i was like okay and another doctor came in and he told me about the infection i honestly did not understand much about it but the way he explained it it's basically a deadly infection and they just wanted to make sure that it was not going to shut down my organs and it was not gonna go through my blood he even told me that they were probably gonna do some um what is it called 
a blood transfer. Yeah, a lot of people start coming inside the room. They start doing a lot of checkups in my body. They start doing x-rays. They start checking my heartbeat. They start checking everything. They start uh, drawing some blood. And yeah, it was, it was crazy. It was, it was just crazy. It was too much. But then this new nurse, she came inside the room. It was my nurse. And she asked me if I could pee. I told her that yeah, I could. But I was taking forever, you know. I was really swollen from down there. And it was... I was taking my time. I guess she got a little bit frustrated. Because she did give me a lot of attitude. And she was like, you know what? We're just gonna play, um, put a catheter. I was like, no, no, no. Like, I, I can't actually pee by myself. She was like, no, no, no. It's just gonna be easier. And you're gonna be laying in bed. It's gonna be much faster. Blah, blah, blah. And I insisted that I didn't want it because I didn't need it. I actually wanted to get up and try to move around a little bit. That way I can keep my body going, you know, and not just be on bed. Because I feel like if I was in bed, I was going to get worse, like worse sick. And I didn't want that. She ended up bringing one. And she tried to put it in. It was so painful, you guys. Really, really painful. And she, she couldn't. Like, she took forever. She tried everything. And she was hurting me so much. So she ended up calling another nurse and they brought a new catheter and this nurse she was trying again i told her once again that i didn't need it the other nurse the bitchy one she was so i don't know i felt like she she was so mean like she was making comments about my private parts being so swollen and she would giggle about it she said that she was gonna bring a flashlight because it was too swollen and it was really swollen it was really bad I have a picture but I don't think I will put that picture here because it's it's really bad and that really made me so mad and not just that but also upset like I wanted to cry I was so upset and I, I didn't know what to do because I, I felt helpless you know I feel helpless my sister she got into a little argument with her because she saw how rough they were being towards me and like the comments they would say so my sister did got upset and she was mad so she was making a lot of comments but I was like you know what just don't say anything because you can make things worse and she was like but it's not okay and i was like yeah but just let it be i just want to go home and she was like no like i'm mad and i was like i understand i'm mad too i'm sad i'm upset i'm, I'm like in so much pain please do this for me so she ended up like calming herself even though she was pissed Gabriel, he was like confused he did not know what to do they end up putting the catheter in the wrong spot they did me so dirty like i don't even know where the heck they put it but i was draining so much blood and i was confused because they told me that it was for like my pee i asked them like why is it red and they were like oh like don't worry about it they even noticed that they fucked up because it, it was not yellow it was not clear it was red it was pure red so it was i don't know what the heck they probably put it inside my vagina i don't even know honestly but that was really really painful and for nothing because at the end of the day they end up taking it off and they were like well you don't need it i was like oh nice now it was even worse because they they traumatized me down there you know like they did something really roughly and they they made that thing worse like it was looking bad 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 and i could feel their freaking nails like grabbing my lips and like opening them up oh it was so painful just remembering the pain makes me so mad as soon as they checked my blood and everything they noticed that everything was getting really bad so they told me that they were gonna take me to the icu because i was in danger at this point i was already so traumatized so traumatized that every time i would close my eyes and fall or try to fall asleep i would wake up crying and screaming because i thought that i was still giving birth i would pee and poop myself like every single night every single day because i will have nightmares i went to the icu i was there for only a day and a half there was another nurse there she was so rough as well like i get it like it was not fun for me to see you cleaning my shit or my pee and i bet you did not enjoy that it was really bad like every time i would shit myself after i had a nightmare um I would call the nurse because I didn't want to have that shit there, you know, especially because I just had an infection and having all that there and spreading, it was not okay. And I felt disgusting, I felt humiliated, I feel so many things, you know. And it was sad for me because it was just, it was, it was too much. 
and the fact that they would take hours to get there it made me feel worse because i didn't want to bother them and that's how i felt I felt like i was bothering everybody that's why i didn't want to say anything she the nurse she would come whenever she felt like she would literally clean my private parts so roughly and she would like flip me like a piece of me and that was so painful because i couldn't close my legs at all and i felt even worse because i did not have my baby with me you know i couldn't even have the bond with him at the beginning like i wanted to and when they told me that i was getting a little bit better that i was not 100 percent but i was getting better um, I asked them, I begged them to please take me to another place because the vibes in that area, in that section, oh my god, you guys, it was really bad. Like, I could feel the sadness, the darkness, the cold, the cold room. It was just, it was just depressing. And I was like, can you please just take me somewhere else? Like, I don't want to be here. And yeah they they end up taking me to another postpartum room but it was like high risk i believe that's what it was called and i asked them right away can you guys bring me my baby like i'm not contagious i know that i might not be like a hundred percent right now but i have my husband here he's gonna be able to help me and i was just like doing the most so i could have my baby with me we stayed there for another two nights and two days and I was enjoying my baby finally I got to see him I was trying to breastfeed it was really difficult at the beginning because he didn't know how to latch he was getting frustrated because he was already getting used to the formula it was much easier for him it was really sad because I really want to have that connection with the baby but I couldn't and I didn't want to get you know like too much in my head because I knew that if I was gonna get in my head it was not gonna be healthy for me so I just let it be I was just enjoying the beautiful moments and the bad ones i was just getting rid of them they let me go home but with the only condition that i will still be in medication i'm still in medication i'm taking my pills they're really strong so i have to take them every 12 hours but um other than that i'm so happy i'm so blessed and i couldn't i couldn't ask for anything else you know i've been enjoying every single day every single moment and yeah that's my birth story I hope I did not skip anything or I forgot anything. If so, I... I'm sorry. But yeah, that's basically what happened. God bless you guys. And I will see you guys until next time. Love you. Bye.